Deuteronomy chapter 28 and Proverbs chapter 10. If I were to put a title on today's message, I would say I brought y'all something. I would say think think blessings. Look at somebody and say think blessings. Mm, mm, mm. If I were to put a title on today's message, I would say God has been good to you. And all you got to do is think about his blessing. What did that say? Think what? When the last time you thought about your blessing? We use the word blessing all the time. And the word blessing means to feel with benefits. Either as an end in itself or to make the object blessed. A source of the Father. Blessing for others. The word bless means to praise as in filling the object of blessing with honor and with good. With good fortune and happiness. Look at somebody and say, think. Blessings. Blessings. Look at somebody and say, expect, expect. Nothing, but nothing but the best. How do we maintain these blessings? Many of you don't understand today that you may say, what do I have to praise him about? What do I have to thank him for? Well, let me give you an example when you woke up this morning, he gave you new mercies. He gave you new mercies. Because every day your mercies are renewed. You are an object of God's blessing. And all you got to do is take a little time and think about his blessing. Think about how he woke you up this morning and how he set you upon your way. Think about when you uh, rolled over in the midnight hour. You could have rolled over on the floor. Oh, come on, somebody. You could have tripped over something in the dark. But God's blessing was there. God's mercy was there. You had to think about how good God been to you. I don't need to remind you uh, where he brought you from. You was already messed up. You was already bound. You was already in trouble. You needed some help. You needed a helping hand. But God's blessing was right there. When many of you didn't know him, when many of you didn't care nothing for you, the Bible says said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him shall what? Not perish, but have everlasting life. God loved you so much that when we were in sin, the Bible said that God commended, God commended and commanded his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. My, my, my. What do Proverbs say? Proverbs chapter 10 tells you and me starting at verse 6. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 6 says, blessings, everybody said, think blessing. Blessings are upon the head of the just. Somebody, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 6. You got to say amen. Put your right hand on your head. It says, blessings are upon my head. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you. in Jesus' name. In Jesus. Now, if you can't bless yourself, how are you going to worry about somebody else's blessing? Yeah. Yeah. So blessings are upon the head of the what? The just. But violence cover the mouth of the wicked. The memory. You ought to thank God that you hadn't developed Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. Old AIDS disease. 
You ought to thank God because the memory of the just is what? Blessed. It's blessed. Yeah. Are y'all with me on this? Ten and seven? Yeah. The memory of the, of the just mm -hmm. is blessed. Mm -hmm. You ought to thank God you can remember things. You, you ought to thank God that you, you can go somewhere and, and don't forget why you went. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm going to talk to you, and then I'm going to get all up in your kitchen now. Uh -huh. The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. Right. The wise and hard will receive commandments, mm -hmm. but a prating fool shall fall. Right. He that walketh upright walketh surely. But he that perverse his ways shall be known. Amen. He that wicketh with the eyes causes sorrow. Amen. But a prating fool shall fall. Amen. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. But violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Always talking about killing and destroying. Right. Hatred stir up strife. Mm -hmm. I say hatred stir up strife. That's true. When you hate somebody, you ain't blessing somebody. You're trying to curse them. Hatred stirs strife, but love cover all sin. I say love cover all sin. I don't know about you, but every day I need a little bit more love. In the lips of him that have understanding, wisdom is found. In the lips of him that have understanding, wisdom is found. But a rod is for the back of a fool. If I were you, I would void who's void of understanding. First 14 says, wise men lay up knowledge. Wise men lay up knowledge. But the mouth of the fool is his destruction. The rich man's wealth. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. But if you want to know the destruction of the poor, is poverty. Amen. Lord have mercy. Amen. The labor of the righteous mm -hmm. tendeth to life. Amen. The fruit of the wicked is sin. That's right. I said the fruit of the wicked is sin. Amen. They're producing fruit but they're sinful fruit. Amen. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction. But he that refuse reproof is erred. Amen. He that hideth hate with a lying lips. Amen. And he that utter slander is a fool. Amen. Lord have mercy. Amen. In the multitude of words, that one is not sin. But he that refrain his lips is wise. Amen. I don't know if y'all getting this. The tongue of the just mm -hmm. is as choice silver. Amen. The tongue of the just is as choice silver. Amen. The heart of the wicked is little worth. Mm -hmm. There's a few more verses here. The lips of the righteous feed as many. Mm -hmm. But fools die for want of wisdom. Amen. The blessings. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on, Holy Ghost. I said the blessings. See, y'all missing this right now. I don't know if you can get past this verse. Verse 22 said the blessings. All you got to do is think a little blessing right now. The blessings of the Lord will make you rich. And when God bless you, he has no sorrow. He has no pain. He has no hurt. He has no disappointment. The blessing of the Lord maketh one rich and had no sorrow, had no disappointment, had no heartache, had no discomfort, had no sickness, had no diseases. The blessing of the Lord. All you gotta do is take a little moment right now and think about how good God been to you. Oh, my Lord. Look around at somebody and say the blessing. The benefits of the Lord maketh one rich and addeth no 
That word God said, I know how to subtract sorrow. I know how to subtract disappointment. I know how to get rid of the enemy. I know how to get rid of the trouble in your life. God know how to subtract and no sorrow. Look around somebody and say, you know you're so blessed. Just, just touch him by the hand and say, you're so blessed. If you don't say it, it ain't gonna, it ain't, you just say you're so blessed. I ain't just talking about the material things you got. I'm not talking about you the, 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 the silver king or the gold king or you got bling bling. I'm talking about serving the living king. I'm talking about the mighty God, the everlasting father, the bright and morning star, the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. I'm talking about the great I am that I am. The before and the after, the alpha and the omega, the first and the last. I'm talking about uh, the alpha lion. I'm talking about the lion of the king of Judah. Oh, my Lord. Let me show you how you got blessed. Let me show you how you got blessed. Turn over to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Many of y'all know this passage of scripture. You see, you ain't just got what you got because you got it. You got it because God gave it to you. And when you see the benefits of what you got, and consider the source, my Lord, consider what you got came from God. Oh, I don't care. Come on, somebody. If you got a little Debbie a chocolate chip cookie in your, oh, come on, somebody. A little Debbie would get you in trouble, but I'm trying to tell you right now, them little Debbie honey buns and them little Debbie Mississippi mud pies. Oh, come on, somebody. You have to thank God that you're able, because in order for you to get something out of your bread box, you got to put something in it. But God is the one to give you strength to put it in there. God is the one that woke you up this morning and set you upon your way. God is the one that clothed you in your right frame of mind. The angels came to your bedside, woke you up, and before you could open your eyes, they vanished in the mist. All because God is giving you another day to be in the land among the living. An opportunity to give him praise. And you ought to take a little time. And you say, praise him for what? For all the mercies. I don't mind singing that song, Lord, make me a blessing. I don't mind saying blessed assurance. Oh, come on, somebody. I don't mind blessing the Lord by singing, Lord, uh, let me learn to count my blessings and name them one by one, one, one by one, and see what the Lord has done. Before you know it, you got a power of blessing. Hey, 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 I'm not talking about material things. You're going to get that if you work hard. The world got that. But I'm talking about having a peace of mind. I'm talking about having joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. I'm talking about having power to overcome all your obstacles, even in the face of adversity. When you're advancing through adversity on the left and on the right, the enemy is mad. Come on, somebody. But you have to be glad. <laughs> What are you saying, Pastor? In chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, you got to say amen. amen. He says to you and me, and it shall come to pass. I like that word. It shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently, seriously, unto the voice of the word of God. Thy God to observe, to pay attention, to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. God said to Israel, now he's saying to the church, I'll set you above all the nations, all the religions of the world. As a born again believer, come on somebody, you can claim the name of Jesus and not be ashamed. And not be afraid. Above all the nations of the earth, God said, I'll set you up. 
In verse 2, he said, all these, all these blessings. Somebody said blessings. All these benefits. All those sources in which you get all that you have will come from the Lord. You are the object of God's blessings. These blessings shall come on thee. And God said, I'm going to give you so many blessings that the blessings is going to overtake you. You're going to be ambushed by God's blessing. You didn't mean to get blessed, but God said, I'm going to bless you anyhow. You didn't get up to get blessed, but God said, I'm going to bless you anyway. You didn't want to be blessed that morning because you didn't think about what God done, but God said, I'm going to overpower you with my blessing. I don't know about you, but I like to be overcome by God's blessing. How many like to be overcome with God's blessing? Oh, my God. You have to thank God that you can throw up your hands. You can thank God that you can give God the praise. These blessings will overtake thee. And thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Verse 3 says, blessed shall thou be in the city. I'm going to bless you not only in the city, but thou shalt be blessed in the field. I'm going to bless the fruit of thy body and the fruit of your ground. I'm going to bless the fruit of thy cattle, and I'm going to increase your cows. Not only your cows, but I'm going to increase your flock and your sheep. God said in verse 5, in fact, while I'm at it, I'm going to bless your basket, and I'm going to fill your storehouse. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me talk this morning. Blessed shall thou be. God said, not only am I going to bless all your earthly possessions, but when you get up to go somewhere, God said, I'm going to be with you when you go out and when you come in. Are y'all with me on this? God said, I'm going to bless you wherever thou goest out. Whatever you do, God said, I'm going to be with you. Verse 7 says, the Lord shall cause thy enemy. Not only am I going to bless you going and coming. Bless your fruit of your womb. Bless your cattle and your flock. Bless your house and your home. God said, when the enemy comes, when the enemy shows up, God said, I got a remedy for him. God said, he might come one way, but when I mess up his mind, he's going to leave seven ways. God got a way of shooting him over here and shooting him over there, turning him around and spinning him out over there. God got a way of pushing back. Somebody say, Lord, thank you, thank you. for the blessings, for the blessings. of sending my enemy in seven different directions. You see, what you're trying to say is that, God, I don't care what way he go as long as he get away from me. Well, come on, somebody. You got to be able to speak it out and be bold when you speak it because it's God that's running your enemy away. Wait a minute. The Lord shall command these blessings. God said, I'm going to command the blessings towards you. Not only you, but your storehouses. And in all that, that thou settest, every time you set your hand on something, turn around and bless somebody by the hand. Every time you set your hand on something, you put your hand on the salt shaker. You put your hand on that stake. You put your hand on that car. All you got to do is think blessings. I got my blessing from the Lord. Amen. The world ain't going to understand you, so don't try to always explain to the world what's and how you're getting blessed because they ain't going to understand it. See, some people don't understand. Some people, they don't want you to pray for you. They don't want you to pray for them. They just want to touch your hand. Are y'all with me on this? Some people say, you don't have to pray for me. Just let me touch your hand. Why am I going this way? So you understand that God is in all control. If God is in control of everything and God has the power to all things, that tells me that God is sovereign. 
Oh, come on, somebody. Sovereignty means that he has all power and all control, and he's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. Hallelujah. Mm. Look at somebody and say, all you got to do is put the ink in think. Look at somebody and say, put the ink in think. Am I right? Come on, somebody. Put, put the, this writing down in your mind and begin to think. Because somebody put it in ink and, and put it on paper. And if we think about the ink that's in think, we can receive the blessing. Oh. Oh, my. I'm getting excited now. And then he says here, the Lord, verse 9 says, the Lord shall establish thee a holy people. No, no, let me back up. Back up verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in the storehouse, and all that thou settest thy hand unto, he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Verse 9 says, the Lord shall establish Establish thee a holy people Amen. unto himself. Amen. As he has sworn unto thee, yes. and thou wilt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God yes. and walk in his ways. Okay. And all the people of the earth shall see yes. that thou art called by the name of the Lord. Amen. And they shall be afraid of thee. Amen. They supposed to be afraid. Because yes. you're walking right yes. and you're living right. Yes. You're being blessed yes. above the utmost. Yes. Wait a minute, it gets better than that. Yes. Verse 11 says, And the Lord shall make thee plentous, yes. plentous yes. and good. Y'all yes. know that candy good and plenty. Yes. Come on, somebody. You hear the kids cry for Where's my candy, my good and plenty? I'm saying to the Lord, Lord, I love my good and plenty. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And the Lord shall make thee plentous and good. Yes. In the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of the ground, in the land in which the Lord swore to thy fathers to give thee. That's true. Amen. Now this is what I love about verse 12. Now when you get a chance, you can read the whole chapter. Amen. But verse 12 is what I want to highlight. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall open unto thee uh -huh. his good treasures. Mm -hmm. I said his good treasures. Mm -hmm. In other words, when, when you when you begin to obey God and keep his word and keep his commandment and do what he tell you to do, that God, God, all come off his throne and go over to his storehouse treasure. I said, God, go over to his storehouse treasure and begin to look into his storehouse, look into his treasures, look at what you need, look at what he got, and tell the angel, I want you to take that and go down to her. I want you to take that and go down to him, and I want you to bless him right where she is. Bless him right where he is. The Lord shall open good treasures the heavens to give the rain upon the land in the season and to bless all the works of thy hand and thou shall lend and thou shall lend what's in your wallet thou shall lend And ask Visa to help you out. Where is my master charge? Can I get a loan? Can I get a payment? Let me get some quick pay. Let me get some PayPal. But God said, if you obey my word, keep my statue. Run after me, and I got a blessing for you. When you run after the Lord, he ain't running that fast that you can't catch up with him. But when you catch up with him, God said, I wanted you here all along. And now I 
got a blessing for you because you come to seek ye my face and you found where I live. You know where I stay. Seek me where I can be found and I will answer you in the desire of your heart. He said, ask what you will. If you're calling me, I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things. God said, I got so much that I want you to have. And all you got to do is live right. Somebody said, walk right. All you got to do is keep his commandments. And he'll bless you like the men and women of God. Oh, y'all can look funny, but I've learned to put the ink in think. And I've learned to receive the blessings of God. And you don't know how God going to bless you. You don't know when your blessings gonna show up. You might not fully appreciate your health right now, but God forbid you be on your bed. And you'll thank the God of all the heavens and all the earth for your foot hitting the floor again. Oh, my back might ache, my neck might ache. I might have a little bit of trouble here and a little bit of trouble there, but I'm blessed in spite of. I'm in a position where I can receive strength that comes from on high. And I give God the praise. I give God the glory. Others might not like the way I act. Others might not like the way I look. But I'm going to give God the praises. I'm going to thank him because I'm going to receive the blessing. Wait a minute. I can tell you who was an expert. On God's blessing. Amen. David was an expert. Amen. David was an expert. Yes. David learned realized that it's all my source of blessings yes. come from God. Yes. And I'm going to praise him for those blessings. Yes. And then he realized, Junior, why he was praising God yes. for a little while. Yes. That wasn't enough. Yes. And he said, I'm going to praise him twice a day. Yes. But that wasn't enough. I'm going to praise him three times a day. But he realized that wasn't enough. Then he realized God blessed me in the morning, and he blessed me in the afternoon, and he blessed me at night, and he blessed me while I'm sleeping, and he blessed me when I'm going, and he blessed me when I'm coming. I realized that his praises shall continually be in my mouth. You got to get in your mind. You got to get in your heart that the blessings of God are assured and the blessings are upon you. Everybody say, think. Everybody say, think. Blessings. They are the benefits. Now let me just say this here. David was on one hand running from the Philistine. On the other hand, he was running from his father-in-law. And he was caught between a rock and a real hard place. He was running, but the anointing was on his life. Come on, somebody. There comes a time in your life when you'll find yourself in a strange place. And you wonder if God is with you. But God said in his word, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. And I'm with you to the end of the age. I'm with you for all time. I'm going to be with you through the thick, and I'm going to be with you through the thin. Whatever you're dealing with, I'm going to be there for you. Hey, 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 hey. David was running. He was ducking this. He was ducking that. He didn't kill the lion. He didn't kill the bear. He didn't kill the giant. He wondered if God is with him. God said, I'm right here with him. I'll never leave you. I'm right here with you. I'm not going to abandon you now. Many times when you're going through, in your body and in your mind, you're wondering if the Lord is there. And God says, stop. Amen. And you'll see the salvation of God. Amen. If you call on me, Amen. I'll answer you. Amen. If you reach out to me, Amen. you can touch me. Amen. If you look to me, 
am the author and the finisher of your faith. Look at somebody say, I don't expect nothing but the best. David. David was running from Saul. Let me just show you something. God trying to bless some of y'all, and some of y'all are in the way of your blessing. You're blocking your blessing. Come on, somebody. But God said, let my blessings be out in front of you. Think about what I'm doing. Think about how I'm moving. Just keep on trusting me. And when David kept on trusting him, the anointing was on him. And David was in the land one day, and he got hungry. The Bible said he had about 600 men with him. And that was a big entourage. They believed in the gospel that he proclaimed. They know he served the true and living God. The anointing was in his life. God kept trying to bless King Saul. But Saul kept messing it up. Instead of him blessing the man of God, he wanted to kill the man of God. Are y'all with me on this? David was trying his best not to touch God's anointed, not to give your prophet no harm. But there are times in your life that folks push you to the edge. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. And you say, Lord, before I go over, can you draw me back? Can you give me a blessing? You heard the rapper say, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. Because I'm just about, I think y'all heard that before. I'm just about. It makes you wonder how you keep from going on. That rapper said something now. Oh, y'all didn't think I could bring that out of the sermon. Oh my God. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. And Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king horses and all the king men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again. You know why? Because it was all the king horses and all the king men. If the Humpty Dumpty had called on the king of kings and the Lord of lords, you don't know it, but you was a Humpty Dumpty one time. You don't know, but you were cracked and broken and you needed help. But God showed up. And I know you showed up. Wait a minute. Somebody said, you put the ink in thing. David. Realized he was getting hungry. He had all these mouths to feed. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. There comes a time in your life that things that you might not want to do, but if you got a family, come on, somebody. I remember the first week I went to work at the VA hospital. Come on, somebody. And I won't take I won't take nothing for my journey, but I wouldn't give a plum nickel to repeat it all over again. Are y'all with me on this? Some people, some people want to go back and repeat what they've done. I don't want to go back and do that stuff again. Oh, you don't have to say amen. Mary, when I went to work the first week, I came home and I said, Mary, I don't think I can go back to work. You know what she said, Minister Green? She said, well, how are all these babies going to eat? Are y'all with me on this? Junior, you going to either have the burp below it or you going to have to bring home the bacon. <laughs> Are y'all with me on this? You going to burp below it. You can burp below it all day. But somebody got to bring home the what? Bacon. Bacon. It don't matter whether it's turkey, <laughs> pork, <laughs> or beef. Just bring home the bacon. <laughs> How many like bacon? Come on, don't do it. Don't y'all look at me like that. Some of y'all can eat a whole pack. You don't even eat eggs and grits. You just eat all the bacon. Somebody said, where's the bacon at? They just ate all the bacon? I'm sorry, I got kind of carried away. David 
David was hungry and he was seeking out some food. And the Bible said he was in the land in which Nabal, Nabal, the man named Nabal ran the land. He had thousands of sheep and goats and camels. The Bible said he had a beautiful wife by the name of Abigail. The Bible said, if you read it, she was not only beautiful, but she was intelligent. Amen. But the name the ball means root. Lord have mercy. It means the name the ball means a fool and root. And the scripture said he lived up to his name. Yes, he was rich and he was true, and he treated his beautiful wife like she wanted nothing. But she kept waiting on the Lord. Yes, she did. Come on, somebody. Amen. David was in the land and he was hungry. And when he got in the side of the country that the ball was shearing sheep, he sent 10 men down to the ball and told him that he was hungry and he needed to feed the men that were with him. You understand something. When God blessing is upon you, those who don't want to bless you have no recourse. When God trying to bless you, they're going to tell you some pitiful story that I, I didn't want to do this, but because my heart is all right, I'm going to do this for you. You have to tell them you ain't doing nothing for me. My source of help come from God. The ten men went down and talked to the boy. The boy heard that the men were in town. They, they had audience with him. And he said, what can I do for you? They said, well, we come from the servant David. Mm -hmm. And David needs some food for the men. Amen. And we ask that you give us some so we can take it back. The Bible said the boy, because he was rude and he was a fool. Mm -hmm. That's what he, was. he was rude and he was a fool. He said, who is David? Mm -hmm. And who is the son of Jesse? Amen. In other words, he knew who David was. Uh -huh. People know who you are. They might act the fool like they don't know. And they know they love to ignore you. You got some folks on your job, you ask them a question. They want all your business, but you ask them a question, and then they get dumbfounded. They don't know nothing. They don't want to talk now, because you're all up in their business asking them questions about their love affair. Oh, my God. I stepped on somebody's toe, and I ain't hear no amen. But I heard some mm-hmm, but okay. And the Bible said, and the boy told these men, I'm not giving y'all nothing. Go back and tell David. And they, they, they couldn't even reason with the man and tell me that David was out in the field, and he protected your flock, and he protected your men, and he protected you all around. And he couldn't even explain it to him. The Bible said that this man was so prosperous. The Bible said that this Nabal, who was rude and wicked, was so prosperous, he couldn't even share his wealth. But let me tell you something. God got good treasures. I said God got some good treasures. And when David, men came back to him and told David, David told his men, strap down, brother. Get your sword and your spears. Get your bows and arrows. We're going to take the land from him. But the Bible said in the midst that the men were going back, there was a wise servant. There was a man in the midst that came to Abigail and said, you might not know it, but David was with us. And wherever David was, was the blessings of God. And he protected us. And he shielded us from the enemy. And the way I look at it, we should have gave him that food. Yes. Yes. What I love about Abigail, uh -huh. not only was she good looking, not only did she come out of Essence magazine, yes. not only was she was the cinephone of, of Jet, yes. I think y'all got my message. Yes. She had wisdom upstairs. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. You can't put a gallon of milk in a paint cot, but you can put a paint cot in a gallon of milk. Are y'all with me on this? A pea brain ain't gonna think much, but if you think on what God has done, it begins to open up your understanding. It begins to open up your mind. 
and look and see how big God really is. David said, strap down, boys. We want to take this. You see, everywhere David went with 600 men, he could take whatever he wanted. But he did want to be obedient to God. He wanted to reverence and respect the man, Nabal, but Nabal wasn't having it. And the Bible said that night, Nabal gave a big old feast, a big old party. The Bible said he got so drunk. Come on, somebody. Don't y'all look at me like that. You've been so drunk, you done ran into everybody. You done fell into the Christmas tree. You done tripped all over the present. Okay, you weren't drunk. You were so high, you didn't even know where you was at. Pastor, you don't know me. I could have been in many of men's arms, but I, I, I only chose one. And Beyonce tried to tell you, if you want a JC, if you want it, it's good to you, put a ring on it. Did I say something wrong? No. Didn't she say that? Let me get back to David before y'all get mad with me. David, David, David said, let's go down and we'll take the land. And the Bible said, after the servant told Abigail, Abigail loaded down some uh, animals and she brought it down with bread and cakes and feed. And she slaughtered some animals and she ran it out and told the servant, go take it to David and I'm right behind you. Amen. And the Bible said when she ran up, she spotted David. Yes, she did. And the Bible said she fell at David's feet. And she said, I know my husband is rude. And he don't mean no harm. And I've been living with him. And he's a part of that Baal group. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. He's a part of the devil's crowd. He's an antichrist. He don't believe in heaven and share with others. Come on, somebody. You got to get beyond yourself and start doing some things for God. Abigail fell down. David looked in the eyes and she caught him with his beauty. She caught him with her good looks. But what impressed her, what impressed David was her mind was sharp and she understood the pending danger and she went on behalf of the entire household that the household would be spared. And she told David, I know that you are anointed and that God is with you and wherever you go is blessed and God is with you right now and I know that you were going to kill these men but don't let this innocent blood don't let this massacre be on you but you take this supply you take this food you take this anointing and I'm sorry for what happened but could you please forgive us the Bible said that David looked on this woman, Abigail, and said, you are an intelligent woman. You are a beautiful woman. But when she said, you come to your kingship, don't forget about me. Come on, somebody. You don't know if you do a kind deed, if you do a kind arms, if you reach beyond yourself and help somebody else. You don't know how God going to spin it around and bring it back to you. You don't have no idea. All you got to do is think about the blessings. Think about the blessings and how good God has been to you. Now, David went on back. And the woman left David talking to herself. That's a good woman. She made me think. A good woman will make you think. Amen. But a good woman won't worry you. Uh-huh. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. This man got to thinking about how kind God will send him. And what you need to understand, David, when he was instructed by the woman of Tekoa, 
that the angel of the Lord was with you. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you, God got some human angels yes, that are walking among you today. Yes. Yes. You might not recognize it. Yes. They're sweet to the heart yes. and they're true to the soul. Yes. They remain faithful to God yes. when others say, I ain't going. Yes. David went back. Yes. The Bible said that when Abigail got back to the kingship, that Nabal was so drunk, she couldn't even talk to him. He was out of it. He was so messed up, she said, I'll wait until in the morning. Well, when the morning arrived, she went into the ball and said, did you know that David and 400 of his men was coming to take over everything you got? The Bible said he flopped down in the chair and his heart began to stiffen. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. But a hard heart will make you miserable. A hard heart will clot your blood vessels. A hard heart will raise your pressure. Oh, y'all ain't with me. I can get into the dynamics and the anatomy where it affects your whole body, but I'm going to be discreet. A hard heart will mess up your whole system. The Bible said after Nabal heard that David was going to destroy his household, the Bible said he had a massive heart attack. Yes. Don't tell me God will move your enemies. Yes. Anybody giving you a hard time. Yes. That's why it scares me the way people treat me because they don't know that when you're anointed and you treat the man or woman God bad. In 10 days, the man died. Don't tell me God won't kill you. Look at somebody and say, I thank God. I'm under the blessings of God and not the curse. And what I love about David, I know David was a ladies man. The Bible said when David heard that Nabal died, come on somebody. The Bible said that he sent a messenger to Abigail and told Abigail, since you are a winner and you are up for grab, if you don't grab her while she's saved and sanctified, if you don't grab him while he's saved and sanctified, then somebody else is going to come along and save and sanctify and grab him from you. David asked for a hand in marriage, and the Bible said David married Abigail. You see, the blessing of God will make one rich and had no sorrow. David went from running through the land to coming into a full inheritance. Wait a minute. You don't know how blessed you are. You might not know it, but you was at the cross. Look around at somebody and say, you are blessed because you was at the cross. The Bible said, curse to the man that died upon the tree. And Jesus took that curse away. And when the process of him taking the curse away, the paradox is that he took the curse away, but he added a blessing to you. I have to go back to the New Testament. And the Bible said, on that day, when Pilate had to crucify three men. There was two thieves and Barabbas. Now I'm going to talk about Barabbas because in every church there's a Barabbas. Now I didn't call nobody by the name. But Barabbas was a murderer. He was a part of the insurrection. 
the rebel against Rome. And he sought no peace. And the scripture said he was on death row. That morning that he was supposed to be crucified, he was with the two thieves. And supposed to have been the two thieves in Barabbas. But that morning, there was a state of execution. There was a pardon that came from heaven. There was one that was in the wings by the name of Jesus that came on the scene. That came and took the lavish place. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. Has a marrow and a cutthroat, a insurrectionist, a rebellious person, a mean-hearted person, a person that is earned death, but yet Jesus produced a blessing and stepped in his place. Are y'all with me this morning? The rabbit is supposed to be dead. The thief is supposed to be dead. Jesus was supposed to be dead. But not only Jesus was supposed to be dead, but you and I. Now, I don't know about you, but I got to thinking about Barabbas. If he was on lockdown, they getting ready to kill you. They getting ready to crucify you. You got to be asking yourself, why is this happening? Why is it happening? When is it happening? Why? Who is it happening to? How come? And then all of a sudden, right before they're going to execute you, then the magistrate come in and say, Barabbas, you can go now. You've been set free. You're on death row. It's time for you to be killed. But somebody tell you, all your, all your crime has been wiped out. You can go now. You got to ask, what happened? Who died in my place? Who went from me? Why did this happen? Who did this? Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. The rabbit is supposed to be dead. But Jesus, but Jesus stepped in and caused a blessing to come forward. God, this is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow here with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul, and that not only you save us, O Lord, from our sins, but, O Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.